Hi, I'm Adam Bennett. This is The Video Shop. This is the second in a series of video diaries for a motion branding project that I'm working on. In the first video, I talked about quoting, brand guidelines, briefs, having a scope for work and other things. And I showed the work that I sent to the client. In this video, I'll talk about personality and animation, tricky expressions, finding inspiration in nature, and what to do when clients go to you, as well as show the work that I've done recently. Okay, let's get started. If you've watched the previous video, you'll know that since this is a live paid project with an actual client, I had to add this legal style disclaimer. The text is also in the description below if you need to translate it. If you watched the last video, feel free to skip ahead, or instead you could go down a rabbit hole on intellectual property disputes like I did when I cobbled this nonsense together. This is the second batch of animations I sent to the client. Since these are explorations, I included notes on how they could be revised. These are the first phase of work the client outlined specific behaviours the firework device needs to exhibit. I'm fairly happy with the progress, but as I said, these are still exploratory. They're more to test the water and update the client, see if any are on the right track and are worth exploring further, and which can be... I mean, this one is objectively pretty mediocre, and I say as much in the notes. It's not a radical concept, but your eye is drawn to the centre square, so this hacky way of having the squares appear is not great. Perhaps more movement on the edges of the frame would help. This push into the center shouldn't be so lethargic, and the square should always be fully formed in the center square, I think. I mean, f*** it, I'll just fix it. And no, I haven't sped this up. This is me, right now, working in real time. Five coffees, no lunch. Okay, still not amazing, but better but the client has specified a few must-haves in this brief, one of which is to keep the action within frame. I'll be honest, I had to Google Autotelic, so this is probably still going in the bin. Another must-have is personality, and one thing which really struck me when I spoke to the client was them describing the firework device as cheeky. I was sketching out some ideas based on this theme I haven't explored yet, but it's something I'm conscious of. From a motion branding point of view, it's crucial to address this question. What is the personality of the device and how will that come across over multiple behaviors? I mean, don't ask me yet. I clearly haven't figured it out yet. But with that in mind, one idea I had was to have the squares flock, kind of like birds. Actually, as I say that, that's another aspect of this process I want to explore. Studying behavior in nature for inspiration. Ah! It occurred to me that this formation of squares could be interpreted as a flock or hive or colony or school. You get the idea. And how the squares interact with and influence each other could add personality to the animation. Also, I should probably extend my research beyond just playing around, trying to get results which are in my head or I've sketched out. I'll talk about this more in the next video, but for now, one thing I wanted to have was a procedural way of having the squares flocking. I wanted the center square to lead the others without having to animate all 49 squares. But how? Yeah. I wanted an expression where I could pair on all the squares to the main square and they'd have some drag or lag or bounce, you know, just some personality. Now, I know what you're probably thinking, mate, you're using the wrong software. I will address this later, but for now, I wanted to see if I could pull this off in After Effects, okay? Okay! I briefly looked at a method from Workbench. Their channel hasn't been updated recently, but it's a goldmine for Expressions Genius. This wasn't really what I had in mind, though. The flocking's based on the elements following drawn path shapes, but it's interesting. Next, I thought I could adapt an expression that I use often from Harry Frank. It basically gives you this effect on linear keyframes, and I use it all the frickin' time. Harry acknowledges that the seeds for this were sown by Dan Edwards. I'll come back to Dan, but first let's talk about ineptly trying to use AI to help with expressions. I tried to use AI, and well, let's just fast forward through this sorry farce. In this particular instance, AI was no help whatsoever. I thought we'd eventually get there through painful trial and error, and I could avoid, you know, actually properly learning expressions. You can judge whether trying to get working expressions this way is cheating or not, but either way, it didn't bloody work. Maybe I need to learn how to use AI? Anyway, back to Dan. If you don't know Dan or his work, I describe him as the Yoda of After Effects expressions. That's no comment on his age or appearance. But if, like me, you remember Creative Cow or MoGraph.net, you'll know how generous he is in sharing his knowledge. Anyway, I reached out to Dan and he kindly came up with this expression. 
you can adjust the frequency and decay values here. This is the expression that I apply to all the child squares. So the only keyframe involved is here with the parent square. I wanted some variation, so I created sliders for the frequency and decay values. So the amounts decrease the further from the center the squares were. It's good, but as you can see, the child squares follow the parent instantly. I wanted some drag, so Dan actually helped with that as well. Honestly, I think he's probably blocked me by now. This is the new expression, which I'm showing in the description below if you want it. This actually has the children feel like they're being dragged by the parent, and it makes for a more interesting behavior. This took a bit of time, so I parked it here, and I might explore it further. I sent these two animations to the client. This one has the center square animated with a wiggle expression, so there's no keyframes at all. This definitely isn't the flocking behavior that I had in mind, but it's kind of interesting in an unexpected way. It might be worth exploring. I'm currently trying to balance R&D time with the budget that's been allocated for each stage of the project, but I definitely don't want to limit the scope of the animations to what I can brute force in After Effects, much as I love After Effects. So I jumped into Cavalry and I've done some initial tests, just exploring what's quicker and easier to do here rather than here. Let me know in the comments if you want me to talk about Cavalry more, but one thing which I loved is rigging these squares in 3D space. I did this the hard way in After Effects, manually moving the squares in Z space and scaling them up or down to compensate. It took forever. I know, I'm actually embarrassed showing you this. Thanks to Hood on the After Effects Discord server for this reminder, but if you're not an idiot like me and you want to do this quickly, there's a free script. And thanks to Unique for pointing me towards this solution, which doesn't involve any scripts, but you need to manually choose the Z distance to camera. But with Cavalry, it's native and one click. And for what I want here, it's perfect, as I'm not bothered about specifically which squares are close into the camera. That's the trade-off. Anyway, one thing I might share with the client when we next speak is this. But this is kind of interesting, and I didn't have to break my brain with expressions. To be fair, my brain is very easily broken. Anyway, talking to the client, what did they think of the animations that I sent them? I actually have no idea. What you're watching now is the last update that I sent them. All the animations rendered on a single timeline with the notes that you're seeing. They haven't seen the cavalry stuff that we looked at earlier. I imagine that we jump on a zoom and I could perhaps share my screen and talk them through it. So I sent this off and a week went by and no response. Then another week. I said earlier that I'll talk about what to do when client goes to you. Well, this might sound basic and obvious, but honestly, I just give them the benefit of the doubt. They're probably busy, Unless you're on a fixed deadline or you're booked on other jobs or you absolutely need answers or urgent sign off for any reason, just give them space. Ping them the odd reminder, but don't pester and don't panic. The client eventually responded and we're gonna catch up soon. But at the moment, I've literally no idea what they think. But let's look at the project status. Last episode, it was this. Everyone was happy. As of now, my mood is still really good but obviously I don't know what the client's thinking. By the way, I'm not sure if I'll be able to keep this running, but at the moment, all my moods are represented by Jeff Bridges films. You saw Staying Hungry before, and now this is from Against All Odds. I don't give a shit. Fair enough. Client mood is, well, as we know, I have no idea, so we'll keep it the same for now. Tune in next episode, folks. Production time is probably six days, but I spent a lot of time rigging things in After Effects and now Cavalry. So I'm hoping the next phase won't take as long. Amount build. <laughs> so it was down 50 bucks before because the client recommended this book. Then someone in the comments, you know who you are, recommended this, which I've nearly finished and I love by the way, so thank you. But yeah, amount build now minus $55. Please no more book recommendations because apparently I'm incapable of not buying them. And that's it. Thanks for watching. See you again soon for the next episode.